So by now, everyone knows what premium bonds are. They are the UK's most successful savings product. However, recently, the premium bonds prize fund rate has gone up from a high of 4.65% down to 4.4%, signaling the end of high prize fund rates for premium bonds. The odds of winning a prize with every £1 held is still 1 in every 21,000. So let's go through my total premium bonds journey where I break down exactly what I deposited per month, how much I won and what the prize fund rate was at that specific point in time. In the end, I will reveal if I've actually beaten easy access savings accounts throughout the same time period and whether or not the prize fund rate actually had any big effect on the amount of earnings that I've received. So in November 2022, I began my premium bonds journey and at that time I deposited a hefty £5,100. So because of the way that premium bonds work, you have to hold them for a full month in order to be eligible for the next month's prize draw after holding the bonds for that whole month. So in December of 2022, I still had £5,100 deposited in my premium bonds account. However, I wasn't eligible for any prizes in the December draw. And this is of course because December counts as the full month that I have deposited and I need to keep it for the whole of December in order to be eligible for January's draw the next month. So a top tip is that if you're going to deposit any money into your premium bonds, do it at the end of the month because that bit of the month that you deposit into doesn't really count and you're going to have to wait a whole month after that. So if you have any money lying around, you might want to gain some interest on that before putting them into premium bonds. So in January of 2023, my first premium bonds prize draw, I had an eligibility of £5,100 worth of bonds. The prize rate at that point was 3% and that month it had gone up from a previous month's prize fund rate of only 2.2%. So this was a huge 0.8% increase. The odds of winning for every £1 bond held was 24,000 to 1. In January, I also added £550 of my own money. And of course, I have to hold that for the entirety of February in order for it to start being eligible in March's prize draw. So my first month with premium bonds, I was very happy to actually win in the first place. And I received £50, which I was very chuffed about, more than the minimum £25. And at that point, £50 was pretty much 1% of the total amount that I had in premium bonds. Of course, if I won £50 per month, that would be closer to an annual rate of around 11.5% or even higher. So it was really good to see that I won £50 in my first ever prize draw. So in February 2023, my eligibility was still £5,100 because of course the bonds weren't held for an entire month at this point. The prize fund rate increased again from 3% to 3.15% and the odds of winning per £1 bond was still 24000 to one. So I hadn't deposited any extra in February and in February I won again with great luck but only £25 this month bringing my total winnings in two months to £75 which I was very happy about and I still wanted to keep my funds in premium bonds instead of actually searching for bank accounts that at that time would probably have given around 2 to 3% as an annual equivalent rate. So in March my eligibility was £5,650 because of course the deposit in January had finally got to the point where I was eligible for that prize draw, the prize fund rate yet again was increased from 3.15% to 3.3%. At that time, we saw inflation running rampage. And of course, at that point, the central bank was consistently every month increasing the interest rates in order to keep inflation under control, which in hindsight, it wasn't very effective, probably should have been higher increases. So in March, I won three months in a row. I was very, very happy. I received a staggering £100, my biggest prize to date. And I was thinking that premium bonds have been working out pretty good to me. Three wins in a row. I was very happy to receive £100 and it seemed like luck was on my side. This brings my total winnings for three months to £175. So in April of 2023, I had a premium bonds eligibility of £5,675. The prize fund rate was the same as the previous month at 3.3%. And in this month, I decided to add another £1,565 funded to my premium bonds account just because I was very happy with my luck so far. And I just wanted to try out my luck and see where I would go if I increased the amount of bonds that I had. However, in April, I got the taste of what it feels like to actually win nothing a whole month in premium bonds. In that, sometimes you can get nothing. And in fact, a lot of people get nothing for months and months on end. It is just part and parcel of how premium bonds work. Remember, with premium bonds, you are not guaranteed any amount. It is all based on luck. 
even with average luck, you're not going to get the prize fund rate. The prize fund rate is not an indication of luck. Instead, it represents how much total funds there are that the government from premium bonds gives out divided by each person that enters. So of course, if you're lucky, you will receive more than others at the expense of a lot of people earning absolutely nothing. But no matter, I just thought it was just one month of bad luck and I continued my premium bonds journey. In May of 2023, I had an eligibility of £5,775. The prize fund rate again was the same at 3.3%. I didn't fund my account again that month. And in May, I received a nice £25, better than nothing, but not one of the higher prizes. So up until now, I have won £200 in premium bonds, and I couldn't really complain about that. Up until that point, I would say my luck was more than average, and it really did work out for me. So in June, April's deposit kicks in, and I have an eligibility of £7,340 in premium bonds. The prize fund rate again stayed the same at 3.3%. And in June, unfortunately for me, I received nothing. In July, my eligibility was £7,365. The prize fund rate again increased to 3.7%, up from 3.3% the month prior. And even though the prize fund rate increased, I received £0 for my premium bonds, indicating yet again that lightning can strike twice with premium bonds, and there can be three months consecutive of no winnings. So in August of 2023, I had an eligibility of £7,365. The prize fund rate went to an incredibly high 4% that month, up from 3.7% back in July the previous month. This also increased the odds of winning per £1 bond from 24,000 to 1 to 22,000 to 1. In August, I added a further £4,835, quite a significant chunk of my money. As I was seeing that premium bonds were working out for me, I thought, you know what, let's put more money into premium bonds. It is worth noting that at that time, instant access savings accounts were also increasing in line with the Bank of England's central rate. So potentially, I could have got 3% guaranteed at that point if I shopped around. In August, luck struck once again, and I won £100. Not the biggest winning ever, but again, higher than £25, and it is something significant, but because now I have a bigger amount in premium bonds, £100 doesn't have the same effect that it had before, because my total size is bigger. In September 2023, I had the same eligibility at £7,365. In September, the prize rate increased to 4.65%, up from 4% in August. This means that for every £1 bond that you hold, the odds of winning are 21,000 to 1, which is the best odds you have been getting for a very long time. And in September, I didn't win anything. So in October, I had a big eligibility of £12,200. The price fund rate actually peaked at 4.65%, so this is the highest we're going to be seeing. I didn't add anything extra in October, and in October, I won £50. So in November 2023, I had an eligibility of £12,200. The prize rate again stuck at 4.65%. This month, I actually had to withdraw £500. But even when I took that £500 out, my bonds that I had bought still are eligible for the November's draw. And my total winnings in November were £25, bringing my total earned so far to £375. In December of 2023, I had an eligibility of £12,000. £1,250, my highest yet, price fund rate still at 4.65%. And in December, I did not add any extra money and I also did not win any cash prizes. So in January, my eligibility reduced because I took out money in November. With the price fund rate still the same, I didn't add anything else in January. And I also, again, did not win anything in January too. That is, again, two months of not winning anything, holding premium bonds. So in February, I had an eligibility of £11,750 in premium bonds. The price fund rate, the last time being at 4.65%. From March, the price fund rate is dropping down to 4.4%. And generally people are expecting the price fund rate to continue to decrease. February turned out to be my luckiest month so far and I for the first time won two prizes. First of all I won a £25 prize and then I won a £100 prize. You can actually win more than one cash prize per monthly draw. If you're lucky enough to do that that is and not looking very likely because out of all those months that was the first time I received two prizes. So since putting my money into premium bonds, I have to date received a total of £500 in prizes. 
This is nice because all of these cash prizes are completely tax free. So even if you are an additional rate taxpayer who has no allowance left over for interest, you don't have to pay a single penny in tax. So during my whole premium bonds journey, my average premium bonds holding per month was £8,425. If we take the average interest rates that Easy Access savings accounts were paying during that period to be 4%, which is actually higher than what they were paying on average, I could expect during that period, if I had put my money in those instant access savings accounts instead, to have made a guaranteed £365. Of course, if I was a higher rate or additional rate taxpayer, I might have to pay taxes on this, so I'm not including that. However, with my luck, I've received more of an annual rate of return equivalent of 5.93%, greatly exceeding what any instant access savings account was paying. So I'm very happy with that. And of course, I personally wouldn't have been better off putting my money into something like an instant access savings account, because of course I made more from premium bonds, but your mileage will vary. And of course, depending on your luck, you can receive a lot more than I did or a whole lot less. Comment down below what you have been earning month on month from premium bonds and let me know during the last 12 months, was it worth it for you to put your money in premium bonds? And make sure to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next video.